What are you most excited about for this trip? It's an opportunity for me to bond with my two sons who mean very much to me. But if you want the real answer, <laughs> it's catching a lot of fish and having some fun. We usually we have some good adventures and some crazy things happen. So um, it'll, it'll just be fun to be out there and get the, the boys involved in the outdoors and something we can all laugh at later. We are gonna catch us some fish. What kind? Walleye. Delicious to eat, fun to catch. That is what we wanted to catch. Oops. These are also called like moon eyes. Their eyes glow with dark dark. They can see at night. They've got teeth. Grab them behind the head. So we have come down the river from our down Glen Lake. We're going on our first portage. <laughs> and we have just realized that all of our food is in the back seat of the car because we didn't have enough room in the very back port, so we put it in the back seat. And when we emptied the car out, we forgot to get the food. So we have a bag of gorp. We've got uh, a little beef jerky. We have three hungry men. We've got some... Uh, We've got three fish, and we are going to have to survive on fish for the next four days. I can already sense how things are gonna go. We don't have, we really, we don't have anything. We have absolutely nothing. Don't really know if we can eat any of the trees or anything like that. Make some pine tea, that's all I got. Pine tea. Um, so we're a little more concerned. Four days later, you can't die really in four days no. from starvation, so get, that's good. You get pretty awful. But it makes for not a fun trip. I have to change our portaging so we get there. Try and get energy. to our end pickup place as soon as possible while we still have food in us. We're having our adventure. We're going to be true survivor men if we make it out of here. It's the end of day two, and it's been a survivor man adventure. We, uh, we've eaten about half a bag of the trail mix we had. We just ate pike for dinner tonight. No one seemed to be real thrilled with my cooking technique. Um, but we managed to get some down, and uh, we're camped out. We made it all the way to Irregular Lake. We. Uh, Thought, instead of taking four days to get here, we thought we'd do it in two just so we had the energy to go through all the portages and everything. And that was probably a smart move because the last one absolutely wiped out Loki. He was like the, the man to go back and get everything a second time. It was 850 yards up hills through swamp. It was pretty brutal. And he was pretty wiped out. So we're going to be here Saturday and Sunday till about 4 o'clock. And I think we'll survive as far as the food's concerned. Um, we'll just catch some more pike in the morning, maybe have a little handful of corp for breakfast and then uh, pike for lunch and then hopefully dinner at Antonio's in uh, Red Lake. So we've traveled 26 miles so far and uh, what we figured out was about 13 hours of paddling time. Um, and portaging. And portaging, which is the brutal part. And we had two fish this morning about two o'clock right now, but both of them managed to break free from our stringer. So now we're eating 
some cattail. It's gonna be delicious. Just gonna grill it up and pretend it's asparagus. But uh, yeah, it's been a while. Long trip. It's actually pretty good. <laughs> what does it taste like? Water chestnut, right? And a little like. It has its own flavor. Yeah. Wow. It's actually pretty good. This may not look like gold, but this is gold because I've got two pieces here and I've already eaten two pieces. And that was my ration of beef jerky for today. So today we've had two half handfuls, half a handful of trail mix. We've had this beef jerky, four pieces, and we've had, what we have, three or four stalks of cattails, just you kind of eat the bottom part of them. We roasted those and ate those. And uh, four o'clock tomorrow, the plane's supposed to come and pick us up. I thought it was gonna rain, but right now it looks like it's holding off. It's uh, four o'clock on Sunday. We're supposed to get picked up by a plane. And we decided to row over to another island to be closer to where we think they were gonna try and pick us up at. <clears throat> and it was like 30, 40 mile an hour winds and we swamped. The canoe flipped, everything went in the water, and we were about 200 yards from shore, 250 yards from shore. And it was white caps, and it was a mess. So we, uh, the boys didn't panic, no one panicked, and we, uh, we managed to get all of our crap back, and we just floated with the, the wind into the closest island. So uh, there was, it was cold, and it was pretty miserable. Everything was soaking wet, I, we, Matt's camera may be ruined. Um, Luke's stuff survived. And we've set up tent and we ran out of food basically because we thought we were done. We were getting picked up. So it looks like we're gonna have to stay the night. And we're going into the assumption that they're not coming for us today. There's like gale force winds out here, it's crazy. Um, we've pitched a tent on an island that had no flat spots. Um, I had a pike on and uh, thought we were gonna have dinner with pike or save it for breakfast in the morning. So I put it on a stringer and it broke the stringer. Uh, popped it and uh, there was a weak spot in the stringer apparently. So no pike for now. And um, we're all very hungry, I will say that. Probably you know, the most hungry we've been. Luke, how'd you sleep? I didn't. You didn't sleep. Rained all night. I keep hearing the sound of airplanes in the distance. <laughs> So we're on to day five. It's about 8.20 in the morning. It rained all night. The gale force winds have gone. Um, we had nothing for dinner last night, so um, we're hoping to get picked up today by the plane and taken back to food. Just a little update. It's about noon on day five. I guess it's Monday. Instead of eating peanuts on a Delta flight back to Jacksonville, we're still just laying in a tent, conserving energy. The wind has picked up again, kind of like it was yesterday, beating pretty hard. And Luke says a big black cloud's coming, so it doesn't look like we're getting rescued anytime soon. So it's 2.46 on day five. It's been blowing hard again. It's probably been blowing hard for over 30 hours. Raining on and off, raining most of the night and into the day. We've had two cases where we thought we heard planes, well, we heard planes. One just a few minutes ago when we scrambled to get outside and thought we were all set and it wasn't for us. So we are back to waiting. Doesn't look like with the weather kind of getting low and misty, we're not sure we're gonna get picked up today. So it may be another day out here. <laughs> Finally came. <laughs> right here, I love it. What's your thought? Happy.
Another little note um, in this adventure of ours here. When the canoe flipped out in the middle of the lake and uh, we were trying to scramble and save everything and so forth, I just realized when we were sitting here in the tent that my wedding ring I've had for 32 years is no longer a part of me. Um, I'd lost so much weight, it just slipped right off my finger. So, sorry Dale. Um, I still married you down in my, in my heart here. So, love you. Bye.